Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 42 of this awesome, amazing Osu Let's Play series. In the last episode, I talked about 2B maps and how they work. And in this episode, I mostly just want to talk about well roundedness and you know what it means exactly, why you might want to be well rounded, if you should be well rounded, and all things pertaining to that. So, yes, before we get into the video though, I want to shout out as usual that I live stream every single day over at twitch.tv slash digitalhypno. Uh, please come talk to me, say hello, uh, stop by if you want to watch me play this game live or just hang out with me live or ask me a question, anything like that. would be very happy to see you guys there. And bonus points, if you tell me that you came from this Let's Play series, I'll be very, very happy to see you there. So yes, with that, let's get into a couple more random maps this episode that I just want to Play in the background while I talk about well roundedness. And specifically, I guess the difference between. Uh, so I think the opposite of being well rounded is being able to only play one thing or one type of map. And oh, there's a storyboard. Okay. Hey, background dim. <laughs> so. Oh. I, I only recently turned on uh, custom like storyboard and hit sounds for these episodes. So. <laughs> Not completely used to it, but okay. I really like playing like this actually. It's really, really nice. But okay, anyway, well roundedness. Okay, yeah. So being a one trick is pretty much the opposite, and that's like only being able to play one kind of map. And opposite of that, obviously, is well roundedness. If you can play pretty much any kind of map at a fairly high degree. Let me see. Oh, shoot. Uh, volume. Okay, yeah, let me fix my volume on my end. Okay, okay, okay. Good. To always volume adjusting at the start of these episodes. So it's hard to really say if anyone's completely well-rounded. Typically, even if you're able to play most things at a fairly decent level, you're still probably like biased towards like one type of map. Like you might have a preference or a type of map that you're naturally good at, even though you can play other things too. And let's see, so I think the difference between well-roundedness and uh, like one trick is easiest to demonstrate if we talk about the difference between solo play and tournament play, because that's where the difference really shines. So let's actually talk about solo play first, because I feel like naturally I sort of tend towards talking about tournaments, because that's what I'm super involved in. But for solo play, it is actually rewarded, at least in the current ranking system of PP, where, okay, so PP rewards being able to play a very high difficulty, um, usually defined by spacing and uh, like star rating, pretty much. So being able to play something that's high star rating and get a full combo, that is what's rewarded in the ranking system. So, oh, this map goes so hard. <laughs> If you are just very, very specialized at one thing and you're very good at it, and you're able to play high star maps at that one specific skill, then you are very heavily rewarded. And it really doesn't matter if you can play other kinds of maps. Like, if you don't want to, you really don't need to. And even re like regardless of the ranking system as a whole, like if you just like a certain kind of map and that's all you have fun with, and you just kind of want to one trick that, then like no one is telling you how to play this game. So. Yeah, I think one tricking is very promoted in sort of the world of solo play. But tournaments, on the other hand, is kind of the polar opposite, where if you are not good at something, you either so you get forced to play things basically. The best way I can describe it is like in single player, like you throw yourself at maps, and then in tournaments, like the maps are getting thrown at you. And if you cannot play a certain map in a tournament, then you are gonna get punished. So it really, really heavily promotes well-roundedness. Um, but then even then, in tournaments, there's also two types. Um, one where being a wall trick, one trick is actually promoted. Or um, like just having a very high skill cap does have its value in some kinds of tournaments. And for that, we look at the difference between 1v1 tournaments, or solo tournaments, and team tournaments which team tournaments are ones where you don't actually need to play every map. So if you are specialized, let's say you can only really play aim stuff and maybe some low approach rate, but you're not very comfortable with tapping speed or very weird rhythms, then 
you can just specialize at that one thing in a team tournament. And if you like, if there's a map that's picked that you can't really play, uh, you can just sit out and you have your team play and it's perfectly fine. So being a one trick actually in that regard, if you're very, very good at what you do, then you can actually provide a lot of value to your team because, okay, especially if it's a less common skill, like, and that's usually actually defined by like what is most like farmable in single player because that's usually also what the most common skill set is. So like these days, I think for the last like couple of years, it's been like aim. Like if you can hit big jumps, then you're probably like you're rewarded for that in the main ranking system of PP. And so that tends to be a pretty common skill. Usually pretty much everyone can play complex aim or like difficult aim, at least to some degree. So that is a more common and also referred to as conventional type skill. Um, also, okay, so maps that aren't really, they don't really involve too much like very difficult stuff. Um, or, wait, what was I saying? I think con conventional, yeah. So I think um, conventional type maps are usually ones that have like very simple rhythm and that's usually also maps that are jumpy. But if you are very, very specialized at an uncommon skill, then that's actually very, very valuable for team tournaments. If you have a very high skill cap in what you're one tricking, then that is actually very valuable in team tournaments. So just because you're a one trick doesn't necessarily mean that you cannot play tournaments well. It just means that, okay, so yeah, it means that if you play 1v1s, then you might actually struggle. Uh, does this map have storyboard? I don't think so. Let me just turn this down anyway. Uh, yeah, I think hopefully that sort of makes sense. Like in team tournaments, you can sit out and in 1v1s or solo or even like team tournaments where like, let's say it's a 2v2, but it's teams of two as well. And like you cannot sit out, then like any weakness that you have is going to get really heavily punished. So hopefully that sort of illustrates the differences between why is it so quiet? <laughs> differences between solo play and or I guess like well-roundedness and one tricking and like when each one is valuable but I want to talk about I guess how to become well-rounded in this episode because I think it's actually it can be tricky for a lot of players and hmm, okay I think okay biggest takeaway from this section of just talking about how to become well-rounded is I guess like always focus on your weakness I think, yeah, bottom line is if you're just always practicing your weaknesses, then naturally you'll end up becoming well-rounded. Um, although I think a big like pitfall that a lot of people run into with that is that they end up only focusing on their weakness and then, oh shoot, almost, <laughs> almost misread. They end up neglecting their strength and then that strength becomes their weakness as well. And then, okay, so... I remember trying to make an analogy of, okay, so, oh, okay, unrelated, but you guys know this, um, or no, I don't know why, why I said it that way, you know Pichy Fat, who has the Usu mapping series? He, so I met up with him in 2018, back when he was making videos pretty actively, and he was making an episode on tournament map food balance, and since we were meeting up in person, he actually asked me to do an interview on my thoughts on map food balance. Uh, I wasn't very good at articulating my thoughts back then, um, but he asked me for an interview and I had this concept of basically, so you have like three main elements of gameplay, which is like reading, tapping, aim, and you want to have an even distribution of like what is challenged on those three. So you can imagine like uh, sort of like triangle, you know, there's like graphs of like different skills and like like depending on how good you are, it like reaches out from the middle to like the like edge of like the corner of the triangle. You, you guys probably know what I'm talking about. There's like skill graph thingies. Um, you can imagine something like that for tournament map pool. That's like a triangle between like reading, tapping, aim, and you want it. Do you want the map pool to be balanced in such a way that all three skills are challenged pretty equally? And also sort of the in betweens. So there might be a map that's like sort of 50% into reading and 50% into tapping and um, pretty much everything. Uh, hopefully that sort of makes sense so that the triangle is eventually perfectly balanced throughout the entire map pool. 
so I had that idea, but I remember I was talking to him about that before we started whatever interview for his video, and I, I guess he, he thought it was like a cool idea and he wanted me to talk about it, but then like I had no idea how to explain it on the spot like when he was actually recording, so I was just like stammering a lot, and then I was like, oh no, this should not be on YouTube, <laughs> and then uh, I don't know, I don't even know if that video ended up getting made exactly, but like halfway through my stammered explanation, Pishy Fat's camera died, <laughs> and so he was like, oh shoot, uh, we might have to record this later, and I was like, let's go. I was actually so relieved because I was like, that should not be on YouTube, that's so embarrassing. <laughs> but I think, so Fishy, I think wanted me to go over to probably the Airbnb that he was staying at or like wherever he was staying. I don't, I don't remember if it was a B&B or not, but I think I like had my flight back home and we didn't get a chance to do another interview. But um, yeah, basically what would have been in my part of that video is just the whole triangle idea that. I just explained. Oh wait, there is a storyboard. Wait, it just... Wait, I didn't even notice. Oh, wait! Oh my god, what? <laughs> wait, this map is crazy. I actually thought there was no storyboard, but I just left the background on. But... Yeah, okay, so... That... So that is my sort of analogy for how map pools should be balanced, I guess. And... Like, I guess why well roundedness is important for map pools because uh, I discussed this in a previous episode where I went more in depth on how map pools work. But basically, map pools are the platform for the better or more skilled player to, you know, express their skill and end up winning the match. Because they're like, OMG, I'm so good and I'm going to show off my skills on like this crazy map that you can't play, haha, ha, ha, and then and they win the match. That, that's pretty much how tournaments are. So. Um, yeah, so that, that is why well roundedness is important. And okay, so it's back to how to actually get well rounded. So, okay, so I talked about neglecting your uh, weak, your strengths and then those becoming your weaknesses. That I think is actually a topic that's been discussed by other uh, OC content creators, such OC YouTubers as well. Uh, I know Zilver has a pretty well regarded. What is it? Discussion type video? Audio discussion video on it? Um, and then I think I know Spaza made a video, probably Tona made a video as well. There's a couple other players, I'm sure. Oh, this map is so crazy. Is there a storyboard on this map? I, I don't think so, but. Oh, okay, this song goes so hard. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, wait, wait, they're actually. Oh, wait, no, no. Wait. Uh, wait, is there? Oh, wait, should, you know what? Okay, let's just play with the background. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so. My thoughts on becoming well-rounded is okay. So aside from you know, don't 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 neglect your weaknesses or don't neglect your strengths because those will end up becoming your weaknesses. Um, I think balancing the three inputs of gameplay, you know, tapping, reading, and aim, is really really valuable, and just being able to self-assess your skill set and understand what exactly your weakest point is, because okay, obviously you know. Practice your weakness, but sometimes you either don't know what your weakness is, or you do know, but you kind of hate that kind of map, so you don't practice it at all. And or like you don't really want, to. like say, let's say your weakness is hard rock, but you're like, oh dude, I hate hard rock, I hate AR10, I hate high AR, I don't want to practice hard rock, and honestly, I feel you. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think for finding motivation to practice your weaknesses. Okay, it's kind of hard. I think for one, um, okay, there, there's like the more like low hanging fruit advice that I could say, which is uh, find good songs. <laughs> That's usually what I always say. Just find songs that you like and things become a lot more enjoyable. But let's see. I think just accepting the fact that like when you're bad at something, it is going to be uncomfortable and you are not going to like, like, like okay, being bad at something is never fun, right? So, oh, shoot, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, it's also not pretty to watch someone who is not good at something, but yeah, I think just accepting the fact that like when you're a beginner, but okay, there's a couple thoughts that I have. So for one, obviously when you're improving at something, 
Okay, when you're a beginner, you improve very quickly. There's like, this idea, especially in, uh, as discussed with like motivation for studying languages. Like when you're a beginner, the difference between knowing one word and knowing ten words is like ten times, like the amount of like language knowledge that you have. So it's like, oh, oh, gee, I'm learning how to speak this language. It's so awesome. I can speak Japanese now, guys. And then uh, in reality, you really can't. But it's super cool, right? It's like a really cool feeling that you feel like you've improved a lot, a lot. But as you improve, so basically, like you sort of get like diminishing returns in like the amount of like what is it oh there's a hold on oh no i i, I need to find it. okay i'm gonna find it after you know what? i'm gonna find it now there is a oh, shoot okay yeah let me see if i can find this uh rem note okay un unrelated uh so there's this awesome note taking app called rem note not sponsored but i used to take notes in this um it's basically okay so if you go to remnote.io it's basically a note-taking app that also automatically makes flashcards for you so oh okay i found it let's go okay it's called the weber fetchner law okay the weber okay this is i almost forgot about this but okay let me pull this up his image copy image address but yeah so remnote very cool uh website note-taking app okay let's see browser browser so weber fetchner law is basically how did i word this Perceived change is not the same as absolute change. That is what it means. And let me pull up this image. So the perceived, okay, so the difference between 10 and 20 is 10. The difference between 110 and 120 is also 10. But the perceived change, like 10 to 20 is 2x. It looks like a lot more dots than 110 to 120. So it's the same amount of increase, but it doesn't feel that way. It feels a lot less. Like when you go from 10 to 20, it feels like you've really doubled in skill. But when you go from 110 to 120, even though you've learned the same amount of like new skill, you still haven't, or like it, it doesn't, it's not twice as much, right? So yeah, a bit of an unexpected tangent. I almost forgot about that. But uh, yes, regarding motivation. And, and I do plan on doing a episode specifically on motivation. So forward to that. But yeah, regarding like, so when you're a beginner, it can be really motivating to like first get into something and like start getting better at it because you're like, ah, oh, let's go, I'm learning so much. And then you kind of get demotivated at some point. Like for one, you sometimes just get to a point that's like satisfactory, like good enough in quote in like air quotes. And then you kind of stop and you stop getting that reinforcement that you felt from like feeling like you're really improving and getting a lot better. So. Yeah, hopefully that sort of makes sense. Like staying motivated. And wait, is this a storyboard that's like making it lighter? Oh my god, wait, that must have been. Oh my god, that was actually so subtle. Really, really cool. Okay, anyway. <laughs> wait, actually, maybe there's just Ki. I have no idea. <laughs> anyway, it was cool regardless. Um, yeah, so when you are practicing your weakness, try not to get baited into like getting some. Like, okay. If you think of your skills in Osu as like being a level from like 1 to 100, let's say you're like level 50 in aim and like level 50 in reading, but you're only like level 20 in tapping. And let's say, all right, I gotta get my tapping up to speed because I'm getting hyper bottlenecked. Uh, actually, me IRL, by the way, my tapping kind of sucks, but uh, that's besides the point. Um, so let's say you start practicing your tapping and you get it up to like level 35. And you're like, okay, that's pretty good improvement. I'm doing better than before. And then you just kind of stop practicing that weakness. And then it sort of falls back to where it was before. Like, let's say even if your tapping ability stays at level 35, maybe you've then improved your reading and aim up to 65. But you're not really practicing your tapping anymore. So it's kind of stayed down in that like range of it's it's still bottlenecking you. But in the past, you remember that you have improved it. So you don't really think about it anymore. But Basically, I think my point with that is like, sort of try to self-assess your like weaknesses and like, I guess, okay, self-diagnose um, regularly if you're trying to be very, very well-rounded. Have I played this map in a Let's Play before? I don't even remember. I want to make sure, okay, I really need to like make a spreadsheet of all the maps that I've played. I'm just going to play it again. This map is so good. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I haven't played it in an episode before, but yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, self-diagnosis 
of like your skill set regularly is I think actually very important uh, if you're trying to really really maintain well-roundedness and improve your weaknesses but uh, okay and I think the best way you can go about doing that let me turn my volume up a little the yeah, best way you can probably go about doing that is play through tournament map pool uh, in the description so I mentioned my previous episode on map pools and in the description, there are a couple of Mapple databases. Okay, actually, you know, I'll just link them in the description too, because um, I'm sure probably a lot of people are too lazy to like go through all that work. But um, yeah, I would re recommend playing through a tournament map pool and just like just playing through a tournament map pool, especially the score v2. It'll really illustrate the like your strengths and weaknesses, I guess. Um, I, I don't know. Hard, I couldn't find like the concise wording that I wanted, but um, it'll really illustrate your like skill level on a bunch of different things, and it'll make it very obvious where your weaknesses are. And then from there, like you might not even realize that there's a certain type of map that exists out there, but then you keep playing different map pools, and you're like, okay, this map, or this kind of map, I actually suck at. Like let's say there's like um, a certain kind of hidden map. Like okay, let's say like low portrait hidden. You didn't, you didn't even realize that was really a, a thing or like a skill that is tested much. But then like you keep seeing it in tournaments and you're like, yeah, I suck at this. Because <laughs> it, it's really, okay, really it's not tested in solo play or it's not really rewarded um, dance reading because it's not high star reading, but that's that's another conversation. But um, yeah, hopefully that sort of makes sense. That <clears throat> you, yeah, so you want to self-diagnose regularly and keep an eye on especially like once you okay so let's say you've assessed your skill set and you're like okay i still get streams so then you start practicing streams and you want to keep sort of self-assessing your gameplay and make sure you don't like start neglecting your other skills uh yeah try to do like you know run through a tournament map pool and make sure you sort of keep tabs of your like different skills because it might be the case that you used to be really, really bad at streams compared to everything else, but then you spent two months only practicing streams, and then now your streaming is actually better than everything else. Uh, which, I mean, hey, good for you, right? But then you want to make sure that you don't neglect your other skills either. And also, you want to make sure you get to the root of the issue. I think that's actually one of the more important things that I've mentioned so far, is that you might be really bad at streams, but it might not just be because you need to practice your tapping stamina or something. It might just be because like you can't really read streams very comfortably, or like you um, like can't aim them properly, or like your tapping might be fine, but you tend to tense up a lot. So, like no matter how much you practice streams, you might still like not be very good at playing actual stream maps. So, be very careful about that and. If you, oh, so if you guys want to uh, learn a lot about how to get to the root of your weaknesses in Osu, there's this crazy chart that someone on YouTube made. I'm not really sure who it is, but I think it was called like PhD, Osu PhD or something like that. Uh, I'll have it linked in the card corner up here. You guys can check out that video, but it's actually really cool. So basically the, the guy, he like, turned like all the different skills in Osu into like a flow chart that breaks down like how they all connect to each other. So you can really see like what the root skills are of like the skill that you want to train. So like uh, streaming, for example, if you are really struggling at streaming, but you don't know why exactly, then you can check out that chart and it will show you all the different skills. And the video actually breaks down what all those different skills mean so that you can really self assess your own gameplay and get to the root cause of your weaknesses. And yeah, I think it's an really cool video the the person who made it is actually such a baller for for making making such an incredible resource for the general community it's so amazing <laughs> yeah anyway anyway enough trolling um that is probably going to do it for this episode just wanted to have a quick chat about well roundedness and improving your weaknesses actually okay i did want to close with a um i guess an anecdote that my teacher in Okay, so let me, let me turn off the music. Okay, so a quick anecdote before I end the video. So when I was in 
high school, I took music theory for two years. And one time, so you know, my music theory teacher was also the band teacher at our school. So you know, he was very, very experienced. And he told a story once where he played in a band, and there was a violin player that was very, very good, like really skilled in every performance that they did, and like every time they you know performed or played, it's really, really like well, like consistent. Also, but able to do very complex songs as well, and. One day, my band teacher, like but you know back then, he like walked past that violin player's practice room, and he was kind of surprised because the violin player w- sounded awful in the practice room. It sounded so bad, and、um, my band teacher asked him like, "Why is it that like in practice you like don't really sound very good at all, but you play you play super super well in concerts and performances?" And the violin player says that if he can play something, then he will not play it in his practice room. Practice room is only for playing things that he is good at. Like if he can play a certain part of the song like comfortably, then that is not worth his time to practice. So 100% of his practice time is dedicated to things that he is uncomfortable with and things that he can't play. I think that's actually something that people fall into pitfalls regarding like practicing their weaknesses. Because it's not very comfortable, and I think stepping outside of your comfort zone is actually very, very challenging for people. And like dealing with that feeling of just, I guess, like not doing well is like p- people want to just stay in their comfort zone and just keep playing things that they're good at because it sort of reassures them. And it's like, oh, you know, I'm actually, I'm actually not the worst at this.、Um, I-, I think also that there's a sense of. Ego that is probably for another video, but basically, I think it hurts your ego and like your self perception in the sort of social world that we live in. Okay, I think I'm getting a little too off topic, but、um, yeah, hopefully, you guys sort of get the idea. Bottom line is, you guys,、uh, if you're if you really want to get better at something, you're gonna have to be uncomfortable until you are comfortable at it. Basically, you're gonna have to be bad until you are less bad than you were before. <laughs> it's basically a good way to sum it up, but. Uh, hopefully, you guys learned something from this episode. To those of you who made it all the way to the end, you guys are awesome.、Uh, check out my channel, watch my other videos, because I do upload these every single day. And if you want to see more of me, I would suggest stopping by my Twitch streams, where I stream every single day. But、uh, yes, with that, we'll see you guys next time.